have here okay wait wait i'm going to open the module who was that okay everybody can you hear me yes ma'am okay i have here the module that you are going to answer actually uh, some of you already started this module so this is the final module that you will be answering for the whole action research and that is writing a research report meaning you're you're going to come up with an official research paper uh, based on the evidences that you were able to collect starting module one to your module two however in your module one and in module two it was just only uh, a brief uh, discussion regarding how to collect to conduct and how to evaluate and at the same time how to interpret what you have collected uh, the last part here is you are going to write the official term paper or uh, research report we have at least few examples of research report in your case um, it depends on your area of specialization because we your arguments meaning you have different kind of research report there are three so the first one is field laboratory the second one is the survey and the next one is i think that is uh experimentation so in short the research report that you are be uh, you will be making is based uh on what have you planned from the very beginning you do not just say your research report is an experimentation focusing on laboratory experiments um just because you feel like it no if you were able to come up with a plan that if your plan has a specific methods that you chose what kind of uh, research instrument you choose what kind of uh, data collection you're going to uh, uh, in order to collect the evidences from your respondents or participants then it will suit on what kind of research report you're going to write however when it comes to systematic process it's somehow the same because you need to follow a step-by-step -step process in order to come up with a good and concrete evidence so meaning uh, you do not um, stop or you do not jump or you do not forget some of the areas because once you do or you commit even one mistake like for example in the interview or the collection of data if you were able to uh, come up with miss uh you weren't able to properly gather concrete evidence or interview it properly it affects the result of your research so therefore uh, it affects also your performance as a researcher it will determine whether you will be a credible researcher or you are uh, a researcher just for the sake of researching so in your research report i have some few activities that we're able to give you of course this is just only preliminary uh, to unlock what have you learned during the past experiences and that is uh, doing this class survey so it's just that this is one is actually very easy and the next one is the discussion of what is research like I said earlier the research is a scientific way of investigating and gathering information 
particularly to establish facts and reach conclusion. So you will have to choose a particular problem, then you will have to have an evidences, and those evidences, evidences are facts, and based on your evidences, what conclusion have you drawn from it? So you are going to conduct this research. Of course, all majors of specializations are kind of always conducting research. So meaning, hindi lang siya high school or college, but when you reach your work, uh, actually when you are doing work na, you are still conducting research. For example, if you wanted to um, work in a DSWD government institution, of course you will still conduct research. Why? You will conduct a case study. What is case study? You are going to research about the person's overall uh, uh, life. So you're going to research his background experiences, what is his health, uh, what is his parents, uh, everything you're going to research. When it comes to social sciences, uh, natural sciences, of course, that's the field of medicine. So still, you will be conducting an experiment, everything about experimentations. Arts and humanities, historical. So still you are making critic through arts that's still research and uh, for example another example in social sciences like teaching police you cannot become a police if you don't know how to investigate because one uh step to come up with a good reliable and, and making sure that you are able to capture a, a person who's really a, has a crack offense, then you need to have a concrete evidences. Well, teacher, a teacher will always innovate something and think what will be uh, best uh, teaching tools we are going to use in order to help our students learn. And that is, of course, still doing a research. So each courses or each work that you will be choosing you will still experience this research writing. It can be either a survey report, field report, or scientific and technical report. So when we are talking about survey report, this is merely on a sociological investigation, meaning that's what you are doing right now especially those who are using survey questionnaire. So you are making a survey report. You are gathering their opinions, their thoughts, their perceptions, their behaviors, and even their personal experiences. When you are talking about field report laborato, uh, the field report, this is merely focusing on come up with a theory based on your problem and you're going to go to a certain place and observe on that certain place. Based on your observation, you are going to take note everything that you've noticed in that, that observation. And then you come up with your concrete analysis, your reflection. For example, of the field report is a case study. Uh, if you want to work uh, in a DSWD, you conduct a case study to determine if that person is suitable to be given a four-piece program or um, what do you call this PWD card ID or scholarship or even um, what do you call this? Uh, help, financial help, financial help regarding health. So you, you will be conducting field report through observations and interviews. Another example is the laboratory and technical report. 
So this is merely focusing on those who are conducting experiments, those who prefer uh, med, med, uh, med reps, uh, nurses, or even doctors, scientists. So you will be conducting a technical or scientific report. Now let's proceed on what really is a research report as a whole. So when you're writing a research report, you need to focus on the basic principle of a good research output. So when you are talking about basic principle of a good research output, you have a clear statement or objectives, well-defined research problem. That is the first stage of our task that is in the module one. I ask you what topic would you prefer, and then I ask you, uh, you're going to write a general questions you wanted to know about that kind of topic. So if you have a clear statement or objective and a well-defined research problem, then meaning you have a basic good research, basic principle, one basic principle of a good research output. Another one is, of course, intent for research of the study to be meaningful. It should be passed through a rigorous scientific and ethical standards. When you are talking about rigorous, meaning you are not just researching for the sake of researching, but you're going to find every means necessary to get a concrete and reliable sources and evidences and data by hook or by crook making sure that everything that you collected is credible and reliable ethical standards when you are talking about ethical standards you are focusing on the morale meaning you respect every uh, person that you are able to collect and gather some information and you avoid plagiarism, you avoid copying. Everything that is related to um, plagiarism that is focusing on ethical standards. Another one, being a researcher, you need to be honest of your collection of information because you are teaching yourself um, when you are talking about honest collection of information, if you are the one who is the kumbaga ang term sa namon ko ang sa mga research is ginadoktoran yung doktoran nyo meaning it is your work not the per perception or the work of other people that you are able to collect meaning amo gita ja ang pinaka importante another one is the respect and the of the willingness of the research subject to be part of the research by giving them written consent and objectivity of the data. Actually, you should have provided consent, whether it is an oral or written work, so that you respected those people that you are able to collect their interview or survey. Another one is, like I said, confidentiality, meaning you never share what the result of your work from other people exact to the person that is part of the research, whether it is your advisors, your teachers, or your partner. Next is appropriateness of the research methodology yields valid analysis and interpretation of data. Meaning, like I said, in module one and module two, you're going to think and plan the process of your method and how you're going to, who are your respondents, who will, where you're going to collect it, how many are they, when you're going to collect it, what will be your process, the step-by-step -step process, and what instrument you're going to use, how you're going to analyze it. 
that is the appropriateness. How sure are you that what you've chosen, what you've chosen method are appropriate for the research or for the problem that you were able to want to find an answer? So to make sure that your methodology is appropriate, you always look for an advice for an expert to verify whether your plan is correct or not because not everything that you are writing in your paper is correct even though you think it is correct but in the perception of an expert it is not correct then meaning you need to revise your work there is something in your research that makes it not reliable. That's why it needed to be revised. How are you going to achieve the, what you call uh, the credibility of being a researcher if you don't have an appropriate research methodology? Another one is in order for a researcher to give a truthful conclusion that will be served as basis of your decision making, you need to present a logical presentation of facts. That's why you have collected your data through an interview and through a survey, because that is your presentation of facts you were able to summarize it come up with a good visuals to show you to show the critic to show your advisor that is this is the result of my research so the requirements in conducting of research of course is you know how to allocate your time meaning you know how to budget your time your resources your people and even your finances like I said, the research writing, it takes a lot of effort mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically, and even your finances. Why? Because research is sometimes, when the other people, when conducting a research, they will uh, move to different location or travel to different places. Where will they find, get, get their finances? Of course, from their pocket. You don't have a choice for that. Because in conducting a reliable research and a credible research, this, you need to have a budget, how you're going to use everything that you have okay a next one is acceptable research form and style in the use to ensure the credibility of a research paper and its conformity to the standard of a well-written output meaning this is what we are going to discuss today i'm going to teach you the guidelines on how to write the research report by following the re the format and what will be the font and the style you're going to use for your final term paper and a good researchers should be known through publication of reports on research re result meaning if you have able to gather collect uh, come up with a good resources meaning there are chance that you can sell your work for a money or you can publish it into a journal via internet so that other people also can access your work you can also share what you have collected and gain some income those people who wanted to borrow the ideas from your research. So here is an example of a research report, the parts. The parts of a research report has at least 
nine parts. The title page or the title, the abstract, the introduction or background of the study. In your back, introduction and background of the study, you can write there your general questions, specific questions, and your objectives. Then your literature review, meaning your collection of related studies. Your methodology, that is your step-by-step -step process. The results, discussions, conclusions, recommendations, and references. So let's go to the title page. When we are talking about title page, of course, it will be the title of your research paper. So this is an example of your informative title. It contains with a title, with the content of the paper, your name, your address, and your date of submission. So that's always the first for the title page. The next one is, the abstract is, can be done only at the end of your research paper, meaning when you are your finished with your whole research term paper, like for example, until conclusion and references, that is the time for you to write your abstract. Why? Because an abstract is an abstract is the summary of your research findings and conclusion. From your intro, question, research question or objectives, methodology, findings, conclusions, and implication. You're going to congest everything to come up with a very short paragraph with at least 100 to 250 words only. So meaning a little bit of background, a little bit of questions, your general questions, a little bit of methodology, a little bit of major findings, that's your result, your conclusions, and your implication. So that is your summary. So how do you do it? At least 10% of your introduction, 10% of your statement of the problem, 20% of the methodology, 40% of your resource and discussion, and at least 20% of your conclusion and recommendation. Paano mo siya mapaigo-igo yung 200 to 250 words? Direct to the point. So that's the abstract. Now, the introduction. When we are talking about the introduction or the background of the study, you are going to discuss in an essay form what is your research is all about and what problems have you encountered in that research. So it explains the current state, what is happening in our society based on your problem. What are the, identifies the research gap, meaning you're going to focus on identifying uh, what are the specific problems that you're able to come up or find. Then put your research topic in the context. It is usually three to five paragraphs long only. So, so three to five paragraphs of in, introduction or rush or background of the study, you are going to present the, there a good essay. Next is after your introduction, don't forget to write your specific, your general questions and your specific questions. Next is the literature review. Summary and synthesis of available resources. Summary, meaning you're going to look for a related concepts and related studies. When you're talking about related concepts, 
informations from that can be found in the books based on your topic it will define explain and describe your topic don't forget the name of the author and the date of publication so that's related concept everything that you can find in a book whether it is in the definitions explanations or descriptions of concepts and theories for example facebook what is the definition of facebook what are the problems that you encountered in facebook so you said popularity in facebook so you're going to get what is the definition of popularity of facebook explain what is it and describe what is it so you're going to find a book for that another one is related studies so when you are talking about related studies, they are based on previously conducted studies, meaning these are research papers or journals that have similarities on the topic that you are researching. So these are the thesis, dissertations, articles, those examples are the related studies. However, you need, you're going to need to find, to follow the proper format on how to write the literature review. So I will show you how to write the introduction based on the output of the UMS 1 last school year. So as you can see, they were able to come up with a table of content statement related review methodology result and discussion conclusion recommendation and reference now so this is the only abstract a very short abstract 250 words and then this is the background of the study so their topic is all about teenage effects of teenage pregnancy in sigma so they presented an essay form about teenage pregnancy and the problems they encountered about it. They provided a concrete reliable evidences. And the problems that encountered about teenage pregnancy, like for example, for postpartum, depression, Another one is medical complication, okay? And of course, the, they have only provided at least five paragraphs all in all. Now, this will be your statement of the problem. So this is your objective or purposive statement and your specific question where did you get this specific question based on your problem this is your problem for example so this is your problem like i told you to create a general problem out of this problem so you're able to come up with a general problem right and then based on your activity here You're going to write a thesis statement and specific question one, two, and three. Meaning, from the topic, your general topic, this general topic, you're going to write down your thesis statement. So the thesis statement is, the research aims to study the effects of pregnancy in sigma so that is the thesis statement purposive now give the specific question where did you get the specific question so based on your general question You wanted to know 
what the general question does. Does teenage pregnancy affect education, uh, health, men, mental, and mental and emotional aspect? of a mother this will be your general question once you've written your general question this general question will be divided into few portion and that is first one what are the different effects of teenage pregnancy number one does earlier pregnancy affect the education of a young mother so that is your second first patient does it affect the health of both mother and the baby that is second which is health this is health now does it affect the mental and emotional activities of a mother so that is your next so you have at least three specific variables variable one will be your education variable two will be your health and variable three will be your mental and emotional aspect of a mother so that is how you write your thesis statement and of course you fo uh, followed by your general questions and subdivide it into specific problems based on the activity in this activity number two. So in your activity number two, I ask you to write a thesis statement and three specific questions on the topic. So this is the topic and you're going to write it here. Same thing with your final output. You're going to write your thesis statement and specific questions about the topic that you chose now let's proceed to the next one the literature review so in the literature review this is what it looks like the literature review, liter, literature review discusses or focusing on your topic is all about known as pregnancy that's it so this is the definition of teenage pregnancy if you can see that that is a definition of teenage pregnancy and the rest are the explanation and the explanation and the description of what is teenage pregnancy another one is this one is First variable, focusing on health. So this is your first variable. Discuss what is it. You're going to discuss everything related to health about teenage pregnancy. So meaning the further what focuses on health related to teenage pregnancy is the medical complication so that's why it became your first variable everything that focuses on the health of those who are experienced by the teenage pregnancy so as you can see they define they explain and still they describe everything about health complication or medical complication about teenage pregnancy. The second variable is, if you can see in your second variable here, uh, mental and emotional uh, 
aspect. So mental and emotional focuses on depression. So therefore, meaning depression is your another variable. So you're going to describe everything about teenager and experiences both mental and psychological problem of those who are experiencing or teenage mothers. So as you can see, it is define, it define, uh, here is the definition. They explain, you can see this is an explanation. And another one here is, this is description. Describe what is it. Include, that's it. The next one is delayed education. So another variable. If you can see, delayed education is part of the variable in your statement of the problem here. So it should be also part in your literature review. Everything about the educational experiences of teenage, teenage pregnant, pregnancy, oh, word. those teenagers who are, who uh, were pregnant. So what does it mean? Aside from delayed education, you're going to write everything, uh, definition, your explication, and your description. And don't forget also to write down some of the researches related to those variables after the concepts. So now you're done with the literature review. So when you are talking about synthesis, uh, you are going to summarize everything from the beginning of your literature review down to the last variable. So that is the synthesis, is what you call it. Called. Summary of your first variable to the third variable. Now the methodology, let's focus on methodology. So your methodology, your methodology, it describes the part, what, what is your participants, the instrument used, the data gathering procedure, and the data analysis. So meaning you're going to write down in a narrative form how are you able to uh, collect all your data and how are you able to analyze all your data. So you're going to describe your instrument, specific instrument, discuss your, how did you gather your data, how did you analyze your data? Now, so here is an example of methodology. In your methodology, you are going to write everything that you need to write. Sampling procedure, meaning who are your respondents, specific, meaning who are your respondents? How many are your respondents? Why did you choose them as your respondents? And what sampling procedure did you use? Did you purposely choose them as your, your, your participants or your respondents? Then if you purposely chose them, meaning you use purposive sampling. You will discuss that further when you reach um, next SEM for statistics, the different ty types of sampling procedure. But for now, we will focus only on purposive sampling because I only ask you for at least five to 10 participants for those who want to interview and then 20 respondents for the survey questionnaire. So meaning you purposely chose them as your participants or respondents. So that's why we choose purposive sampling. So you need to write down the place where you conducted your research, how many were your respondents, 
and what criteria you were able to follow in choosing your respondents. For example, your criteria is age below 20 years old and teen, experienced teenage pregnancy. So that is the criteria. How about you? What is your criteria? In the case of those Facebook related to popularity, so make criteria ka mo, di ba? So meaning, damo siya, for example, likes or hearts in Facebook. So those are criteria. So that's sampling. The data interpretation. What is the data interpretation? When I'm talking about the data interpretation, is researcher will collect, uh, focusing on how you're going to collect your data and how you're going to interpret your data. What did you use? So, for example, may another example ako dere. Some research report para mas madali ka ninyo. Take it as ABM one. Kasi gani parehong jang kanin yun sa iba na social media addiction. Gani Facebook tasha. Don't worry, I will share this to you as an example so that you can able to. Follow the format. Yeah, the Tamaja methodology na pangita ko. Kita karo din. First research report. Stem, stem, or stem. And group, group, or group two. And group two. Nairoden kita nai roden para makita dun na yad. Na yari tayong sa pico this is last year's group stem. Mga ano sila ka ng crit magkapi. So as you can see, we statement that the problem related literature. Where's the methodology? Okay, here's the methodology. Kita? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes. so here's the methodology. It discuss what is the methods. This is your purposive statement. What did you use to conduct? You use in-depth interview. Okay? You don't need to follow this quantitative phenomenological study, qualitative research, because that is more on... Uh, Thesis writing, but you can use this term. You can use this term, qualitative, quantitative, or qualitative research. Quantitative, if you are using numbers, or qualitative, if you are using words like interviews. So, if you are using an in depth interview, you're focusing on qualitative because you are describing or this using perceptions. While quantitative, you were able to come up with the scores or mean scores. So that's why. Next is you describe it. You, of course, like I said, purposive statement, number of sample, number of participants, okay, and where. So they were able to provide a table for it. 
they use all the stems and all the ABM number of respondents. Nag interview sila sa stem, nag interview man sila sa ABM at least ten. Then after that, at may space cha. Kulang tasha. Kulang. Kulang tayo, brother. Okay, dari yung gali. Sorry. Kita na. Okay, so the data gathering instruments, we discuss niya. So, in gathering data for the study, the researcher made questionnaire issues, distributed where, how, and then how did you collect it? So, what did you use? In your case, you only use interview. Hindi yung pagsinulat ka lang observational method and questionnaire kasi ang gamit mo malang is interview. Ang iban ka ninyo, ang gamit malang is questionnaire. Isa. So, kanero din nabi, medyo metikuloso sila, mas dinuruhan nila ilang method. Mahuguran sila. So, that's why damo ilang methods. Like I said, you can use almost everything. Next is, after that, okay, data gathering procedure. So, you're going to describe your data gathering. Dapat yung concrete na pag-data. Gathering nyo. Sila, ano yun, nga laong. Ah, Nag-ubrot cover letter. But in your case, you never do that. You only verbally ask, di ba? Verbally ask or ask permission via messenger or text. Islap mo dyan. Because that is your procedure. Do not follow what is written by others. Because ibang ila procedure sa imong procedure. That's why you need to write down the process of your work. So based on the process of your work, that is the time that the advisor will critique whether your work is appropriate based on the methods or instrument that you're able to describe in this data gathering procedure. They, they ro din, amo dya kahaba ng ubra, kasi amo gimang tadyagin ubra nanda. Naglaong sanda sa principal, nagpa-approve sanda, nag-ubra sanda at letter, yung describe nanda ng letter. Paras pang ilubra ko kaninyo? Dahil yung gintao nanda ang questionnaire, si ilak uh, interview, uh, verbal man andang sabat, voluntary basis. Oh, ma if you can see, it is a very concrete narrative form, meaning gin narrate niya from the beginning up to the end of data gathering of data gathering procedure. So, ang ako na lang gin ubra as a teacher, I write down all the comments so that they will uh, know which part is needed to be omitted or irrelevant or you need to retain. So as you can see, kung ako mag-critic ng advisor, inabutangan ko doon siya kung ano ang kailangan or hindi kailangan. Now, let's proceed. After data gathering procedure, you're going to write down your data analysis procedure. What, you are, what do you mean by data analysis procedure? Meaning, you're going to describe how did you analyze your gathered data? So like I said, based on the module 2, the experience that you had in your module 2, you have two ways of interpreting the data. The other one is through encoding and finding the mean. 
And the other one is through encoding right codes and right themes. So when you are writing themes, meaning you're doing thematic analysis. But when you are writing, uh, you are encoding using mean, meaning you are using statistical tools. And what statistical tools did you use? You use frequency, you use percentage, and you're able to use the mean of your questionnaire. Now, that's statistical tools. So... In the statistical tools, you are going to describe only why did you use it. So while in T, those who interviewed, you're going to discuss, discuss the step-by-step -step process of the thematic analysis of Clark and Braun. The first one is data transcribe. The second one, I asked you to transcribe, diba? Right? Number two is you were able to generate the list of ideas from the participants. So what did you generate? You try to highlight those important information. Number three is you're going to group them according to their similarities. And we're able to code them and find the themes for interpretation. As you can see, you write it, the, the initial codes, you decode them, and then refine them properly and write your general theme. So you're able to come up with a good Gabian ng inubra medyo detalyado. But in your case, you can write it in a summary form. Enough, you know. You just look for look for Clark and Braun two thousand six and that is thematic analysis. So mo jump ang itaon ng steps ni Clark and Braun may summarized version siya. You can use it as a summary or part of your methodology. Sabi yan di Rodeno mat mahugud ng maya gusto nanda yung detalyado ng ilog sa the thesis. Now, here is how you're going to write the result and discussion of your work. You don't, for those who are doing qualitative research, you are going to write only the result, discussion of the result of your work, discussion of the result of your work based on the themes and the codes, followed your implication or your claim or opinion, so that is your implication or claims or opinion, about the discussion of your result. Tandaan niyo itong dinescuss ko kaninyo about the codes. Ang codes ang ginagamit niyo sa pag-discuss it uh, result. For example, this is what looks like and they already know but So these are their codes. Ang kwa? Ito, makita. Makita. Sige lang. Hindi sa nindi makita. Basta, for example, these are the codes. 
the projects, the assignments, the researchers, examinations, outputs, stress. So those are the codes and the themes. May mga themes and that'll find it hard to think. Okay. So based on the codes and the themes, nag uh, paragraph to discuss what is the result of their work. So as you can see, the result showed that academic workloads affect students, project assignments, researches, examinations, outputs, and performance tasks. These loads are stressful, especially when it needs to be passed immediately and requires internet. Students find it hard to think answers because they are drained and they lack critical thinking strategies. So these are the codes and the themes they were able to collect and gin discuss yang result. Followed by the implication. So the implication is the opinion of the researcher based on the result. So as you can see, it stated that it, this implies that the workload are hard to handle because students does not have adequate resources and mental preparedness. Students have a lot of things to do at home, but because of school requirements, they are unable to do it. Piled works com consequently result to pressure and destruction. So this is his opinion or their opinion about the result. Okay, so now let's proceed to the next part, and that is the evidences. When we are talking about evidences, we are focusing on the related studies or researches that is similar or uh, similar or connected to your implication or result and discussion. So how it is similar. For example, you were able to research in a Google Scholar about workloads. Okay, huh? this is the research result. According, or it, this is anchored to the study of, or to the research of Masson and Gulrez, 2015, which stated that students experience stress because of curriculum's complex concepts and balanced teachers, student teachers ratio and healthy student teacher interaction, hard and fast rule discipline, and too many complex assignments and lacking of management. If you have noticed the similarities between this one and this one, the similarities of the opinion of the researcher and the result of the research of Masson and Gulrest, the two ideas has similar in concept. So therefore, this This one is related to the result and discussion and implication of the researcher. So this one, the blue, is the evidence of your opinion as the researcher. To make your opinion reliable, credible, and valid. So how did it make it reliable, credible, and valid? Number one, you have able to come up with correct facts based on your data gathering interview. So these are your facts. Na bold yun on siya. So those are your facts. So meaning, sigurado ka na amudya ang minatood sa bat. And then based on your research from other researches, amuman ang sabat. So this is your another evidence. So your implication is valid and reliable because gin suportahan mo siya it facts concrete facts from a reliable source from which is your re the, ng respondents and of course from other 
researches to support your opinion as a researcher. So that's how you are going to write your implication. Make sure that your result and discussion naka-align sa three specific questions. For example, dili kay Ruden, ang first question niya is, paano buon ko dyan, ha? 100. What is the perception of students about the benefits and advantage of... Kay Ruden dyan, dahil tagalit. Okay. Okay. What are the perception of students' academic workload? So this is Rudens Group's first statement of the problem. So the first statement of the problem nakaalign siya sa first discussion, implication, and evidences. Next. Second statement of the problem is this. What are the effects of academic works in the lives of grade 11 students? Now, the focus kita sa academic works. So, in their final output, it focuses on academic workloads of students. Of course, this is their result. This is their claim as a researcher, which is their opinion. And this is the supporting evidence from other researches. And the last question is, what are the coping strategies that can be used to overcome the effects of academic workloads? And that is their last output, coping strategies on the effects of academic workload. Now again, Result. Next is implication, claim, or opinion of researcher. And the last one is supporting evidences. Related researches. Make it valid and reliable. If you notice that on which me ang source. So this is an example, like I said kagina, this is an example of a table sang codes and themes para maubraw nyo nga report or discussion of result. Sample lang na. Now, once you are done with your result and discussion, we are going to proceed to the Conclusions and recommendations. So when we are talking about conclusions and recommendations, meaning you're going to restate the major findings, limitation of the study, recommendation, and implication, note that in some cases, conclusion is integrated into the discussion. So these are your um, results, official results. So you're going to write your official result. One or two sentences is enough. This is the result of your statement of the problem number one. This is the result of the statement of the problem number two. And the result of the statement of the problem number three. So your conclusion or the general answer based on the result and discussion. So that is for conclusion. We do not forget to add the recommendation. Nano ma recommend nyo para ma improve or change. So you have at least three recommendations from your conclusion one, recommendation from your conclusion two, and recommendation from.
from your conclusion three. And don't forget to add your references. Ang pananaging gamit nyo nga references pagbutang sa sources ninyo, which is the literature review and the result and discussion of evidences, isulat nyo gid tanan-tanan diri. So, isulat ang author's name, date of publication, okay, the title, and the place of publication. Ang tawag ko na style is APA documentation style. So that's how to write a research report. Don't worry, the appendices naman is the attachment of your work. Like for example, letters, picture documentation, uh, videos, uh, videos your screenshot lang na, mama na. That's appendices. Uh, letters of permission, naka-attachment sa appendices. So that's how to write the research paper. Don't worry, I will be sending these examples in your Google Classroom so that you can have your basis. Hindi nyo gid pagkapiyon ang pinaka-detail date ng Obrande Roden, ha? Sundo nyo lang yung summarized version it in yung uh, narrative procedure. Okay? So, pero ang parts, daon gid siya dapat. Sundo ng parts, pero summary lang ang obra. Okay? So, I will be sending that to you. And let's see, kung may question pa ka mo, dari sa atong yung obra ka ninyo. Sa activity nyo dari. Dari ma lang ka muna budlayan, di ba? May din pa ka muna budlayan sa activity nyo. Hello? Din pa ka muna dari na budlayan, wa yon? Okay, this is just only a guide for you to write your official output para kabalo ka mo kung paano nyo siya isulat at mayad. Diyang mga naka-table nga ra, uh, para mag-align na ang inyong uh, ideas, para siyang uh, graphic organizer, na organize nyo ang ideas properly, kay naka-align siya properly based on your specific questions. Ang specific questions is called statements of the problem. The inferences is called claims or opinion. And then, my last part, Mandari, nga gaubra ka mo, it... Diyang generalization, amo dyan siya ang inyong uh, conclusion. Findings, okay. Next is... Yung na-initial nyo da yun, ang conclusion nyo. And then, masulat gig ka mo da yun sa final research report. So, as you can see, I have here an example of an abstract. Tanawan nyo man kung paano sulatun ang abstract. May itaumang lang ako kaninyo nga sample it abstract so that you can follow also the abstract. Okay? You only have 250 words. Maximum yun ako 300 para kaninyo. Pero actually, dapat 250 words lang nasa. Okay, so ang inyong final output is to finish your research paper, this one, the research outline. Hmm. Yeah. So may mga detail man akong pag-ubra kaninyo, naka-outline man ang pagsulat sa inyong introduction, para hindi ka mawagudla yan, naka-outline man ang pag-ubra sa inyong literature review. Para hindi mo ka mabudlayan kung paano ka mo mangita, dapat i-organize nyo lang yung mayad. Naka-outline man ang inyong parts of methodology kung paano nyo isulat. Research method, discuss. Participants nyo, discuss. Summary, summary, summary lang on yung tanan. One paragraph, one paragraph each is enough. The maximum number of pages will be 15 to 20 pages only. Okay? 
So 15 to 20 pages for that. I will be requiring a final output for you and it will be recorded as your final output for the research report, not just in research paper, but also in your EAPP subject because research report is also part of your subject. That is your final output. Okay. Para naman, nakasulat man, no? Naka-outline tanan. So, hindi yun ka mawabudlayan masyado kung paano siya isulat. So, as you can see, your final research output, nakasulat ni Rip. Pila ka paragraph sa abstract, pila ka paragraph sa background, questions, three, literature, discussion, conclusion, and recommendation. Okay. Any more question? Pila ang size like sa words ba lamang? Okay. So, yung pinaka-final output nyo kanakon, you're going to type it in the Microsoft Word and the font size will be 12 double space and the font style will be Arial. Sige, obrawan ko na lang font size nyo 11. Tapos Arial font style. Font style. Style. Na. Tayo and margin on your left will be 1.5. Top, bottom, right will be 1 inch. Okay, nakita? May question pa? Hello? You have any more question? Okay, so please inform your classmates that the final output will be submitted on. Nanong ganto schedule ko? Yeah, let me see. Forgot. That is your final output for for Google Classroom which is soft copy. Yeah, 24. Yes, final output will be 24. That is your for uh, action research. But my requirement for your final output in Research report is printed version of this. Hindi lang galit print, printed. Soft copy man in this, pero naka-document style nita siya. Itaon nyo ka na kon. Before I give you your final exam. Okay? Please inform everybody regarding my instruction. More question? Ang sa reinforcement, ma'am, bali may... Uh, documentation siya nga Juan and then ibutang man siya sa blog? Yes, you still need to sa upload it in the blog kasi sa blog is para yung taong kaninyo na may ara ka mong uh, i-review for future um, output bala. Ma next school year maubraw mang gapon ka mo because in reading and writing subject and may ara agad din yung gapon nga research report subject na specific yung GID, may ara ka mong basis nga kung pwede din ka mong makatuon. Na at least may makaintindi ka mo kung paano nyo siya. Ma-review ma nyo siya liwatang inyong output. That's why I ask you for a blog. Ma-revisit ma ma nyo siya based on your output. So, pero ang soft copy gitang ginapangayo ko is for me, Gidya. That is for, will be compiled in my in my files and then i will show who will be the best output among of the use one okay so once once i will see a, an outstanding output you will be exempted in the final examination okay yes ma'am okay so that's it no more question Wala naman. What about the others? Lana? Okay. Lana, ma'am. 
Oh, sige, that's it for now. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, ma